Uh, very good evening uh, to all our viewers. Welcome to Friday's edition of the Evening Review. My name is uh, Taiwan Jabela. Tonight uh, we are taking things lighter. It's Friday, no heavy stuff. We're talking about music, we're talking about entertainment, and uh, what, uh, why those are important or can be used actually to shape uh, society into a better one. And uh, to help me unpack uh, the conversation is uh, my brother Jackson Wahengo. He is a uh, Namibian musician uh, based uh, in Europe, but uh, you know, he doesn't forget where he comes from. He always comes home when time allows. Uh, uh, Jackson, thank you for your time, my brother. We are very, very excited to have you on the show. Uh, welcome back home. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. No, no, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, why, why are you based in Europe? Maybe to start from there. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Um, um, my wife is from Europe. Okay. You know, my kids are Namibian, they're Europeans. So I left Namibia, I think it was two, 2007, okay. when we went um, to Geneva, because that's where my wife got her first job there mm -hmm. for, to work for the UN. So I've been actually, actually been in Geneva for maybe eight years. Okay. Yeah, I've uh, been playing music there and uh, yeah, and look, uh, as we spoke before, I, I was born not in Namibia. Yeah, I was yeah. born actually in Zambia, but I don't know Zambia because I left, you know, Swapo took the kids out of the camps and uh, when they created Kwanza Sur in Angola, so I was shipped there. So I've been moving around ever since, you yeah. know, so for me, um, I'll always move around. You see, but home, as you said, is, is home. <laughs> home yeah. is home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. O w where are your parents originally from, or your people? My people are from uh, northern Namibia, Koambo. Okay. Uh, my mother, Landulen uh, Yahambo, she's uh, from Mbaranto. Okay. Yes, but well, my father is from the other side, Ongenga. Okay. So, yeah, so they are basically all Awambo, yeah, from uh, the north. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. You t tell me your musical journey, because you, you are actually very good with your hands. Maybe yes. you can even uh, try something there <laughs> la la later. Later, yeah. Yeah, but um, you, have you always wanted to do music? Yeah, I always tell people when, I, when I'm asked, because I think I would say, excuse me, I always go back to where I grew up. Yeah. Because we grew up in a, in a very... It's, it's a very, not strange, but um, it's, it's like when you say in an outlier situation where you are in refugee camps, you are in a war situation, you are, in a, you are a kid, but when you grow, like now when you're kids growing up in Namibia, you don't wake up and the first thing you have to do is to march and to salute, mm -hmm. understand? Uh, so the first thing when I grow and I probably could speak and, and, and hear people is singing freedom songs. So that's why I always say that everybody that grew up in that, those camps is, is a musician because we all sang and we sang all the time, mm -hmm. you see? So we sang, but mainly just political songs. Yeah. 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 Um, to some, I don't know why, but we never really did religion in the camps. Yeah. I came to see that here more in Namibia when, I, when we came in 1990. But I would say um, for us music and singing was always there since forever and maybe I just chose it because it was already there and others probably just decided to do something else but we all sang and um, we had mini choirs s but then you can tell who was into it mm. you see so we would make uh, what we call a uh, omaru imbo kuimbo mm. maybe so and then we would make sometimes people would sing at the parade everybody but then you would have groups of 6 to 4 people who like a small choir and uh, and, and, and present and uh, you find some kids who have their groups. I was one of those. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that maybe it came from there because Shikololo too, he was one of those and he was very good in that. Mm -hmm. You know, singing his group was always, if Semnioma is coming, Shikololo's group or some other kids. I was a little bit, Shikololo was big, was older, he's younger than me, he was a few months. Mm -hmm. But he's, he's always been, you know. His group will be chose to sing freedom songs or he will be chose the one to speak to the president. Mm -hmm. You know, because he can narrate. So you can always tell maybe that it's always been there uh, from a young age. Yeah. Mm. A at what stage of your, I mean, of course, you started developing love for singing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I suppose uh, 
uh, at what stage did you start actually using instruments like the guitar you have in your hand today? When we arrived in Namibia, we stayed in Okarongo, Ponanjaba. Mm. Uh, one of my cousins, Mika and Utapo, he, he grew up at, in somewhere around Bengela. Uh, and then when he came, we then came to Okarongo together. There was my mother um, and her sister, my auntie, you know, mm. So the missionaries actually brought guitars and they taught them how to play. And my mother and her sister, they were very good at playing guitars. Mm -hmm. So one of their guitar was, has always been in the house, although it's, they never touched it. After when we came back, they just kept it there, you know, but it did not have strings. So it was because they were playing in the 60s, mm -hmm. you see, but the guitar was there. So when we found it there, we came from exile. We are 12 or 11, Tulonga is 14, Mika is maybe 18 or 19. And then he, where he grew up, you know, in Gela, there was a, a guy who used to play like the Kangu Kenyala style. So Mika kind of learned from him. And then when he found a guitar in there, he put, you know, this fishing. We used to fish a lot. So he, these fishing lines, we put them, there was only three, mm. and taught us how to play. You mm -hmm. see, if you go on Facebook, you find a, a picture of me and my grandmother and my mom with a guitar that looks so big, you know. Mm -hmm. That's where I learned how to play. Okay. Yes, Mokarong. But then I learned how to play and then we moved from there because we were moving a lot, we just arrived. Mm. My mom was trying to settle, to find a place where to, you know, as you know, the resettlement process was not so, but we cannot go there. So, <laughs> so then we moved to Kwanyama. Yeah. Kwanyama then there's no guitar, I was only 11 then. So I didn't play for a long time, mm. you see. Mm. So then from Kwanyama, we, my mom found a house in Ongediva, we moved to Ongediva, Pomuchipande Kikapa, mm. better housing. Then. Uh, stayed in Ongwadiva. Then my, some of my colleagues that were with me in exile, they were repatriated from Ludima school, mm. and they were all put in Mushipandeka. Mm -hmm. These guys were playing guitars. That's when I started to play again, mm -hmm. an instrument. Uh, that's 1992, I would say. I see. Mm. Are you self-taught, or did you eventually go to some sort of training to play? Uh, I, 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 I was taught, as I said, by Mika. He showed me how to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when I didn't play for a long time, because we didn't have a guitar, and then when we moved to Omanajaba, Setson came from Cuba, and the brothers that came from Ludima, they had guitars. Mm -hmm. I remember them trying to teach me and Turonga. That's 1992. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, you know, when you're a kid, you know, I was into other things, I was in football. So I didn't really learn, but I don't remember how I because Tolonga picked it up that time when they were teaching us, but they say no, no, boy, Carola is too, you know, he's doing two other things. Yeah. But later, I think, by just by looking, I picked it up myself and learned and learned, and I was playing all the time. If you go to Guadiva, people are from 19, 1992 until 97. They know, if you say Jackson Wahengo, oh, the guy with the guitar. Mm -hmm. Even the principal of Moshi Pandeka, he was like, this guy is just guitar all the time, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just guitar, guitar, guitar. Yeah. yeah. So I was self-taught, I would say, by looking at my older brothers. Yeah, yeah. And then they would show me things when they saw that I was interested. Uh -huh. You see? And then in um, 97, I finished high school and I, I came to Windhoek. And uh, because my brothers then when they were creating the Mighty Dreads, um, my mother, because me being the little one and the other two, um, in music and having dreadlocks and rasta, which no, nobody understands, you no. know, our people. Especially where we come from. Yes, yes, you see, it was a new thing, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the, but they were stubborn and my mom was like, she said, you are not going to follow them, you see. You are going to be different. She was already saying that before I finished high school. Mm -hmm. But I knew she was all in vain. It was all in vain. I, I knew already that my path was curved. Yeah, yeah. After school, I would go to the ghetto, stay with my brother and practice. But then, because I didn't want to disappoint her too much, yeah. so when I came here, I enrolled at the College of the Arts, just uh -huh. to show that I'm, <laughs> I'm at an institution. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was a self-taught, and then... Uh, yeah. Is it um, today, because I remember uh, when I, when the, in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. when Mighty Dreads were really, really Mighty Dreads, yeah. they yeah. were very, very popular, um, yeah. Because it was mighty dreads. It was um, um, well, uh, what is the guy who sang Onjo Diofiku? Uh, Steve Hanana. Steve Hanana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, a number of because reggae. I mean, even reggae that time was really yeah, it really was popping. Yeah, yeah. Rashiama, Shemietu, yeah. many bands. Yes, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, is it is it your career now? Are you a career musician, or do you do it as a, as a side hustle? 
I would say I'm, uh, I, no, I, I, I do other things as side hustles to assist my music. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's, um, it's been very tough for many of us to survive solely on music, you see. Especially, um, some, for some people, you, they, they live with uh, partners who have jobs from 9 to 5, maybe, and they, they, they don't mind having someone at home who is always there, and uh, you have man coming in now and then. But um, for me, it's always been, uh, especially now when I, the last years in Europe, it was difficult, completely difficult with COVID and everything. There were no shows, nothing, everything was stopped. Mm -hmm. You see, album sales, not that much, mm -hmm. you see. So I do other jobs, you know, like I would probably, would, I would work like in a restaurant sometimes just to make some money to support my music, mm -hmm. you see. Um, it, it's, it's very difficult. That's why for many musicians, even here, my friend Patrick, I was talking to him, I think, two days ago. Mm. Patrick, uh, he's a, he played for PDK for some time. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Patrick, has, um, he can make this for you. Yeah, I saw. My yeah. son, he advertises these things on social media. Definitely. I was, very, I was actually impressed. Definitely. You should visit his place. So I visited his place, not for that. We were just talking about music, you know. We wanted to do a song together. When I arrived there, he was looking like a completely different guy in... Um, blue overalls and, and wood and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, so does this work for you? He said, look, look at this house where I'm living. Look at all those kids, you know. That's not music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. music did, did, of course, give us a name. In Namibia, you find many people with big names, but not that much money. Mm -hmm. Understand? So here you can become famous, really famous. Like, if people in Europe, they think I'm famous at home. Yeah. Then you are so, so famous, you have so many views, you have so many people that interact with you, but, but yeah, but there's no money in music in Namibia. Mm -hmm. it, it, there are two guys, three guys that are okay, you know, uh, but the rest, it, it's, it's a hustle. Yeah. Yeah. So I have other side hustle to support the music. Wonderful. Mm. We, we go for a quick break and then uh, return for the second part of the show. NMH at one brings you news from all across Namibia. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact NMH1 at synergy.com.na. NMH at 1, your lunchtime news companion. The show continues with uh, Jackson Wahengo. So, so against that background that you just spoke before the break to mm. say that, um, you know, it's very difficult to be a musician, especially yeah. in Namibia and yeah. or if you have your origins here. Mm -hmm. um, so what keeps you in the music then? What, what keeps you in the industry? Mm. Is it passion? What is it? It's passion is, um, you see, I had a, a, an interview with, uh, about, uh, Jay-Z was speaking to Ke Kevin. He said, it, it, you can't really not stop, you know? He can't say, even if he has so much money, he retires. No, it's, you say that and then next day you have a song in your mind that comes up and you want to share it with people, you know? Mm. I have so much to say. I've, um, I love the guitar, I love practicing, you know? Um, so it's, um, I would say it's passion, it's, it's, it's a calling. Um, and uh, it's it just happened, it just comes natural. I'm looking at my kids and uh, how they treat, how they, get music so easily. I see they're also playing. Yes, uh, yes. You can just tell, no, this is just something that comes. It's either yours or not. Yeah. 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 And even, but sometimes it's yours uh, and you still have to work hard, you know? Mm. Yeah, you, you still have to work hard even if you're talented. You still have to keep digging. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But is it evolving? Um, <coughs> look, there's um, a lot of uh, young people that want to do music. Uh, when I was at university, mm -hmm. seven, 17 years ago now, I went to university in 2003. Mm -hmm. And um, there were a lot of people who wanted to do music, even even UNAM students at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, it was about quiet at the time, mm -hmm. he and all mm -hmm. those things. And parents would always warn us. Yeah because there was always this negative attachment, this prejudice against musicians, that yeah. they are crazy people, that they are 
drunkards and they're into drugs and sex and all these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. um, and that everybody wanted their children to go to university and get their degrees. There were people who, say, who said, for example, to their children that uh, if you get your degree and you want to pursue those things, I don't mind, but all these things. H has the perception evolved around music now that we spoke about Jay-Z? These guys are mega stars. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think they they faced a lot of stumbling blocks in the people society judging them just for being musicians, even if you haven't done anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Is that perception changing now? Are people starting to think that maybe this is just a person's career? Yeah, it's changing. I think it's uh, because now we are parents. <laughs> yeah, so that's how it changes. Yeah. Because you see, so it was difficult to convince our parents to let us do this. Mm. But then, I don't know, Setson and Russ, they were always friends for a long time. When it on came from Cuba, he admired us, so they became friends. So then, for us to convince our mother is to kind of, every time Rush comes to Angwediva or Shakati, he comes to visit our place. Because he was, Rush has been big, you know, you yeah, know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yes. So when he comes home, then she see, mm, he's driving a nice car. Then she kind of see, okay, maybe they can actually do the same. Do the same. Yeah, maybe because Rush is big and he's, he's driving a nice car and he's living well, maybe they too can become that way. That's kind of how my mom kind of softened down a little bit. Yeah. So now we are parents, uh, I'm saying this, but when my daughter, she just finished high school, I mean primary school, they go to what we call gymnasium, it's a different system from here. So gymnasium is where you kind of, she was in primary school, but now she's only 16. So going to gymnasium, is you choose a career school, you see? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like high school, but you choose a career school. So yeah. it's, and she chose a music school. But I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a struggling musician still, you see? And I'm saying, look, I've been in this industry for a long time, you know? And I, my brothers have been to, and my friends and all of them, they, they are all, I'm not saying they are not well, but mm -hmm. we are not way, the way we want to be, yeah, you see? Yeah. I prefer you choose something safer, a little bit. But she made up her mind, you know. And I also listened to other musicians, like I mean, to other people, like uh, like this brother, who's uh, Will Smith. And mm -hmm. he said, when he finished high school, he wanted to go to do music. His mm -hmm. mother said, no, you can't go to do music. Yeah. Uh, if you do that, then he did uh, music and art, you see. Mm -hmm. But he said, I'll do it anyway, you see. Yeah, yeah. And he said, now he said, if I would have followed my mom's advice, you see. Yeah, yeah. So things like this, I think it's changing because we, we yeah, we, it's us. Mm -hmm. You know, and we listen to other, and we look examples just like how my mom looked at Russ and softened down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. wonderful. The the um, mighty dreads. Mm -hmm. what, 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 are you guys still? Does it exist still? Do you once in a while, you know, link up as a, as a group and play, or is it dead and buried? <laughs> I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say dead and buried. Um, uh, I always try to, you know, they, that's the Wailers. Yeah, yeah. Peter Tosh, Bob Marley, and Bunny Wailer. They were together as the Wailers. They started together, you know, and uh, th somehow they split up at some stage and the whole world was angry, you see. And Peter Tosh said, what God put together takes apart, mm -hmm. you see. And um, the Mighty Dread, we are, we are split. The Mighty Dread was set on mainly writing the songs. You see, because he was more, we were looking up, he was older, we were mm -hmm. looking up to him. He knew, he was teaching us everything, he was writing, he was, you know, he was the only singer, lead singer. Mm -hmm. um, so we were, as, although we were a band, if you take bands like the Rolling Stones, that's a band where they go in a room, lock themselves up together and they write a song. Together, you know. The Mighty Dread was set on coming with a song that he wrote, with songs that, not a song, songs that he wrote. Mm -hmm. It's okay, this is what we're going to play today. Okay, Jackson, you are the guitar player, you play this. Sometimes even showing me what to play because yeah. he, he knew better. Mm. Um, so I think when we then grow apart, I went to university, uh, Cape Town. Um, Jerry went to Europe, everybody went around uh, everywhere. And also because sometimes brothers, we, we, myself, Mrs. Ellen Setson and Tulonga, we, although we didn't grow up together as brothers, it doesn't really, you know, siblings. You mm. know? Sometimes we crash mm. and uh, things like that. Uh, so no, we stopped playing together a very long time ago. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, 2005 or four. I would, I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. The in the few minutes that we have left, uh, Jackson, mm -hmm. um, if you can briefly say to me what is the importance 
of music because we look at music mm -hmm. as um, you know this hype and you know dancing in bikinis and shorts and all these things but there's uh, a deeper underlying responsibility of music in shaping society uh, what are your thoughts on that um, music educates you see it mobilizes like um, many if you see an election and anywhere even in the US you forget you can find Nicki Minaj um, campaigning playing at uh, Democrats or I think she actually <laughs> played for the Republicans mm -hmm. you see here you find the money you find a uh, dog in Gaza and all my friends you see going to play you see myself uh, as um, this swap campaign although I never did music for any any party before for the first time I did a song for somebody within the campaigns you mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. so to give motivation you see because I believe I believed in that person mm -hmm. so when for me writing that song is to give a motivation so that uh, when she listened to it and actually the day she heard it she apparently she stood up and make a few push-ups mm -hmm. you know so music it is teachers it is um I, I like Angu Kenyala I like that Aquila because of the message in there yeah. and the language, you know, because I grew up in the refugee camps, so I don't know that well Oshwambo, and, so, and I like traditional music. And for me to to know how to to put words together in Oshwambo, mm. I have to listen to Kangwe, I have to listen to Nangiri Nashima, uh, Tatekwela. You see, mm -hmm. so music uh, it educates, it's uh, it's beautiful, it, it's therapy, it's uh, it's many things. It's many things. Mm. What song can we do while we? While we wind up, while, while we wind up here, we wind up. Uh, I spoke about Kangwe Kenyala. Yes. Maybe let me play Kangwe. So yes. see, because this song, when you listen to it, is history. Yes. You see, it's too long, so I'll just play a few parts. You see. Yeah. yeah. So. Hmm. Dina nange mwe shinge o Kangwe Kenyala. Kenyala da from Konda ekata na kweda. Kanda kwe nula nukba na kundula sha. Dula ndari kengo penda lewe akakuruwa. Dangere kwa kwa itama kumba tende hongutu Pane nda dili ilanda hongono kakano nangu Na kwa toko politika anu kwa kambo kale ni nangu Fikoro tole kwa shena shuwe dasha tule Tapiti la mokuwa nyama umu angola kanona Eshito ya penga baichone yoko matango Ndeshi kwa vika moko ngona no kengula Namonda tishuwe da hano kwa meshuwe tuka kuwa Kwa imo peno maimbi ope na no madaka Daka ndo pene jila pombada Pame no maka iperi Atu ni nyinga eri piano ikuti yetu ishona Shuwe da mbori na uda kwa farende ange Shia mwone mbulu yo kwa patulu ronje Bwame na mwonda tiwari hano waponyo wa efele mwene Hatu mbo tinta yande hatu mbu waka waka Ndi mwono nje boya shiwe danje bo itayu mbu vari Mwonda tiwa ikembera ndari mbilu wei Ngeni ndari koka ndari koka nengoro ndari koka ya shiweta Yeshi nda ya pushiweta Mwonde mkwa talo bombu da mwonde mkwa talo meti mwonde le shiweta Kwa mwena mboli shiweta afya nare My brother, uh -huh. I know you, you almost uh, went in full full mode. No, few, few <laughs> Thank you, my yeah. No problem. The yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was uh, yeah. my brother Jackson Wahengo just uh, filling us in uh, on uh, his journey, and of course uh, giving us a bit of uh, you know dancing shoes there. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and uh, all the best, my brother, for for all the future endeavors. Thank you. Uh, greet Thank you. Uh, the family in Europe. I will do. Sure, sure. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. My.na Property Show provides viewers with the best in class content, engaging interviews, as well as a showcase of the latest property related products and services. The show is aimed at property enthusiasts, real estate agents, buyers, sellers, financial institutions, and developers. My.na Properties is broadcast on NTV, 1UP2 and Crushhead on the following Facebook platforms. The Republican, Namibian Sun, Algemeine Zeitung and Namibia Media Holdings. My.na Properties focuses on property content and interviews, interior design tips and tricks, DIY shack and more. For property related news and advertising, contact my.na at synergy.com.na. My.na Properties more than just a roof over your head.